Use case number six. Write a method that checks if a person can vote or not based on their age. Yeah. So the use case is that someone is going to enter their age, let's say in years, and you have to decide whether they can vote or not. Let's consider India as the example, and let's understand that 18 years is the age after which you are eligible to vote, 18 or above. Right. So that is a very plain, simple use case that you can build it. However, let's make it a bit interesting. We'll not accept the age in years. We'll accept the date of birth of the person. Okay. So let's say my date of birth is let's say 31st February 1904. You have to calculate and check and tell me whether I can vote or not. Okay. That would be our use case. So I'll quickly create a new Apex class. I'll call it Apex use case six. Yeah. And I'll create a method public static. This would again be a Boolean type of a method because it will return true or false whether I can vote or not. So I'll say check voting rights. And what am I expecting? I'm expecting a date field, which is the date of birth. All right. What do I need to do? If I had to think about it first before writing it down, I would simply say I have the input of date of birth. I know what is today's date. I'll calculate the difference, convert it into years, check if the converted value is greater than 18, greater than or equal to 18. If it is, I'll return true or else false. As simple as that. See, the good thing is if I write it in comments or if I write it in my notepad, if I write it somewhere before actually digging in into the code, it is very helpful. I mean, this is something that I practice for all of my use cases that are not straightforward and I have to solve a complex case, right? What I'll do is I'll put all the permutation combinations on the notepad. I'll take all my thinking cap and I'll try to do it on paper first. And once I'm sorted on the paper, once I've understood all the possible combinations, permutations, all the checks I have to put, all the things I have to do, that's when I start coding. Right. So just it's it's a two step process. I cannot just directly go ahead and start, you know, typing out things blatantly. No, that's not the right way to go about it. Why? Because you, you'll, you'll have a better clarity when you when you actually sort it in your head first. OK, or else you'll as as and when you write code, you'll, you'll keep maybe messing it up. All right. So it's always be better to have your head sorted around the problem and then you can actually execute it because see programming languages be it C++, Java, Apex, C Sharp, .NET, Python. The idea is you sh the problem should be solved in your head first. If you, if you can solve it in your head, you can use any programming language to actually let the computer solve it then based on what you what whatever you decided it to be. That's that's the st straightforward thing, right? Cool. So I have the date of birth. And I know what is today's date. How do I know what is today's date? Today's date is basically a variable I'll create and I can use the system class, right? System dot today. What does this do? This gives me current date. Okay. So for those of you who have already seen my triggers video or who have already seen my validation rules or formula functions or flows, you know that the today function exists, right? And that gives you this information. So this will give you current date as in today's date. And then I have the date of birth field. Now I want somehow to be able to do a difference between date of birth and today's date. Now I don't know how to calculate the difference between them. I cannot just simply subtract it because they're not numbers, they're dates. So I go back to my favorite document and that doc document would be the Salesforce document, right? I'll say date methods Salesforce. So I'll open the date class. So this is a class, right? Date is a class, so it will have methods for sure. So I'll go to the date class and here I'll open the date methods. Okay. So under date methods, I'm looking for a difference, right? I'm looking for a difference between two dates. So if I say add days, add months, add years, no day, day of year, no days between returns the number of days between the date that called the method and the specified date. This looks interesting. Right. So if you are able to pass a second date, if I open this particular days between method, you see how does it work? It is taking a start date. It is taking a due date. It is using the days between method and it gives you the number of days in between. 
very straightforward. So I'll just quickly take up this reference code from here and I understand what I'm writing, right? That's important. I understand what I'm writing. I'll just take it here. My start date is the date of birth. My end date is today's date. Yeah, what will this return? This will return an integer value. How do I know that? I looked into the documentation. It will return an integer value. So I'll say integer total sorry total days in between equals this particular value yeah now if i have the total days in between let's say it is basically 1454 what do i do can i simply divide it by 365 and get the years roughly i can right so i'll just divide it by 365 i'll just take this and i'll divide it by 365 yeah so it will give me the number of years right and when it gives me the number of years I'll say if total days or it, it should not be called total days I'll say approx age in years all right I'll say approx age and I'll say is greater than 18 greater than or equal to 18 I'll return true else I'll return false instead of writing else I can very well remove the spaces and put a false here for any other scenario all right makes sense let's go ahead and remove everything else let's say deploy first of all let's see if it deploys fine it did let's copy this name let's go to developer console refresh our tab and let's open our apex class which is use case 6 and I'll copy this name anonymous window I'll say apex use case 6 dot check voting rights yeah and I'll just pass in my date so let me just try to pass in my date of birth 1995 02 15 ideally this should be in the right format okay let's go ahead and say execute you see it says that the method does not exist or incorrect so what do I have to do I have to pass a date field here what am I doing I'm passing a string field here right so what I'll do is I'll say date my birth date is equal to 1995 to 15 yeah and I'll pass this birth date from here okay is this correct now let's quickly check see it says illegal assignment from string to date what did I do I created a variable but then again I assigned the string to it so what do I do I know my birth date but but how do I tell the system I have a string value right so let's again go back to our date class and try to find out something that will work for us okay so if you see there should be another method here that's called new instance what does this do this takes three parameters it takes three parameters year month and day and it constructs a date automatically so I can either use this or I have a string so what can I do I can just check this parse method what does it do it constructs a date from a string correct so let's try to either use the parse method or there's one more method which is called value of so it returns a date that contains the value of the specified string so I can either use value of or I can use parse yeah so let's give it a try and let's see how it goes so I'll say date dot parse and I'm passing it a string value now let's try to say execute it says invalid date which means the date format is not correct here okay so let's take a look at the parse method what do you notice you notice that the parse method takes the date in dd sorry mm dd yyyy format by separated by slash so I'll try to use the same format so it will be mm dd y y y y and let's get rid of all of this from here and now let's try to say execute this time it executed fine so date formats are very important okay let's try to say debug it does say that it is true and I have voting rights yeah that's amazing to know <laughs> cool so what did we learn here we understood a bit about date methods we understood how to actually use date how to ensure that the right format is entered date is a very troublesome uh, data type to be dealt with for people who have worked with date fields it is a very troublesome data type to work, to be dealt with because every system has their own format for dates and then you have also your own format based on your locale or your time zone
correct so it's always an important to come to the doc documentation and see which method accepts what kind of format based on what what logic and if you know that you should be able to resolve it okay if you were given three parameters the year and the month and the date separately you could have used the new instance very easily however we had an entire string as part of our, our assumption so we could not use this okay so we went with the parse method and the parse method did not take the date in any random format we gave it to it took the format in a specific way right if i take a look at the value of method you see the value of method takes a standard date format which is the entire date time format so you have to construct that and then pass it okay so always be aware of what kind of format are you working with what are you trying to feed it to and how do you expect the answer to be right so all of that has to be taken into consideration when working with date fields all right but yeah as part of our use case we were able to figure out that himanshu whose birth date was mentioned is able to vote he has voting rights awesome that was use case six i'll see you in the next one bye Thank you.